Bailey Unicorn Segovia setup on site video. Today we're going to run through the setup on site of the Bailey Unicorn Segovia and we're going to show you how to work everything inside the caravan. Starting on the near side, we've got our 230 volt hookup. So when you're going to site, your mains lead is going to plug into here, into the caravan. The socket behind is for the motor mover, so this will turn the power on and off to the motor mover, which again will run through this when you come and collect the caravan. We've then got an external 230 volt socket along with a satellite connector, so if you go on site you can connect into the site satellite and this one you can plug normal 3 pin plugs in and use power into the awning. We've got a locker for storage underneath of the bed, this is a wet locker so it has got the, the tray inside so you can put muddy boots um, etc into there and not have to worry. It has got both of the wheel locks, the Alco jack leveling blocks, the winder, they're all in there. Next along we've got the external barbecue point and we have got the little fitting on there as well so you'll put your gas hose for your barbecue onto this side here, jubilee clip, it will push in and then you can turn it on with the yellow tap. Round to the front of the caravan this is fitted with the 13 pin electrics so again just make sure your vehicle if it's not fitted with 13 pin electrics you've got the converter that will go from 13 pin male just make sure that you've got the converter from a 13 pin female to two 7 pin males the Alco ATC and again, when we hitch up, uh, we'll run you through that. This will make a bit of a noise on the, on the chassis. Green light will start flashing and uh, go green as we start to travel. The AKS 3004 hitch head, again, will run through the hitching off. We have got a video in our description that will show you and run through all the hitching up guide also. Moving on to the offside, we've got our water pump connection water pump will be in the sink of the caravan and when you come onto site drop it into the aqua roll plug it in and pull the top down and that will just lock it in the flue for the aldi water heater it's just the flue you don't need to do anything with that gas bottle we've got room for two gas bottles we have got a few other bits and pieces in here at the minute um, so there's a mains lead and a couple of mains roll uh, aqua roll adapters as well the gas it's set up for propane and when you come to connect the propane on you've just got to remember that the thread is opposite to tighten up so when you come to tighten the gas bottle up we're going to go anti-clockwise and when you come to undo it we're going to go clockwise it's literally just turn the gas bottle on to turn the gas on and again always just make sure that the gas bottles are securely fastened into position. Cassette toilet, our top one is for the flush water so you'll need a little watering can or a bottle to fill this up with the flush water and it's pink chemical that goes into the flush section. The cassette on the bottom to remove it we've got the little orange handle that lifts up and cassette pulls out. To empty that we turn out the orange empty part, remove the cap, we've got a little air button at the back, we just press that and empty it into the Elson point on site. If you want to pop any blue chemical just slide the filler back, open the hatch and we can then put chemicals into there and give that a swirl round if required. Again when you come to put this back in make sure that's fully closed and this is in line as if it's not it's not going to slide back in. Again we'll show you inside on the toilet how to make sure that the toilet's closed properly so this will come out also. It has got the wheels on 
and you've got the handle for taking it over to the Elson point. There is a little bit of fresh clean water in there which uh, has just got a slight bit of blue chemical in there also. For draining off in the winter just tucked down the side is the drain bung or the drain hose. Um, little cap comes off and that will drain off mainly for the winter if you're not going to use it for a couple of months it's probably worth draining this off as well just in between time and again cap goes back on and just back into the little clip on the side two points for wastewater just here so your waste water pipes are going to go into there and then into your waste water container. Last, we've got another little storage locker that goes straight underneath one of the back bunk beds. We'll now move inside of the caravan. First of all we've got our awning light which uh, the little switch is on our control panel here. In the Bailey Unicorn Segovia when we move inside our main control panel is here. Uh, we've got our main on and off switch here which will then show us what voltage that we've got either in the battery or if we're plugged into 230 volt electric what we've got coming off of the charger. We've then got water pump internal and external. So if we're going to use just your normal Acrol outside, we would use it for external. And if you're going to use the internal water tank, we would use internal. Now also for filling of the onboard water tank, we would put it to external to fill that water tank, which again, when we just run the system in a minute, we'll run through that. We've then got our lights. So a main control for all of our lights inside so again if you're going out you don't need to connect or you don't need to turn individual lights off you can literally just as you walk out the door pop the light switch off and that will turn them all off and then as we showed you a second ago we've got awning light we've then got individual switches as i say for all different lights around the caravan we've got a 230 volt socket here and then we've even got a 12 volt power socket and an aerial point um, on a lot of the lights we have got individual switches and again around the van we have got individual light switches as well again we'll show you a few more of those when we get to the back all of your spotlights uh, underneath the cabinets have got their own switches on Moving on to the water system. Now, as I explained, we have got an internal water tank and we've also got our normal external water tank. Now, if we want to use our internal water tank, we won't change anything here. We will leave it as it is. So at the moment, we have got our filler loop shut off. Now this filler loop will basically bypass the pressure switch and fill the onboard water tank from the external water tank. So if we're going to use, if we're getting into the winter and we want to use our internal water tank, the first thing that we would do is turn this in line. That will allow the water to bypass and come through and fill the onboard water tank. We'll then press the external water pump switch above the door, which will then turn our water pump on on the outside, draw the water through and fill our onboard tank. Now there is an overflow and a drain for the onboard water tank. 
also our overflow so just make sure if you you've you're filling that tank up if it does start to overflow it will flow out of here and you'll see water going onto the floor and then through the winter the little shut off valve there we would open that and that would drain the water from the internal tank once we've got that water tank full of water we will then shut this valve back off and then we would turn the water pump switch to internal that will then use the pressure switch here and draw the water from the internal water tank and supply your taps as I'm going to show you now. So I'm putting the water pump to internal. That will then run our water system from the inboard water tank and again that will work on the little pressure switch then and once we've got up to temp up to pressure the pump on the internal tank will shut off if i lift this cushion up you should just be able to hear the the internal or the internal water pump kick in and then shut off now we've got a little bit of air in the system there then if we do need to adjust the pressure at all on the pressure switch we can increase the pressure and decrease the pressure so as i say we increase it by turning it in and you'll hear the pump kicking in and out and then decrease is back off again if i put that on now and that then just turns on and off straight away if we then want to use our external water tank we literally just leave the system as it is and um, we don't need to touch anything now and we just put the switch for our water pump to external and switch over to external literally now when we put the pump on we should get the little light illuminate to say the pump is running and water coming through and again then as we shut that off we'll get the little run light turn off after about 30 seconds it is on a pressure system so when you first set the water system up or even after changing your aqua roll or refilling the internal tank the best thing to do is run the shower through get all of the air out of the shower on hot and cold and also the bathroom sink just make sure you've run it on hot and cold and got all of the pressure through the system and so again when we refill the system for the first time or we're refilling the internal water tank or we're changing the water in the acrol just make sure that you pull the water back through on the hot and cold with the bathroom with the bathroom sink the bathroom shower and again the main tap and again just make sure that we've got the water with a nice flow as we have now if you've drained the system down when you first come to run it through there'll be a lot of coughing and splutting for a good five minutes on the hot water tap and that's because we're trying to fill our onboard water tank up now to drain this through the winter right down the back here we've got a little yellow as you can see our little drain bung or drain switch so as you can see our little drain switch is here now in the down flat position is for running the system and to drain the system we pop that into the upright position and that will drain the water system back off again just make sure the flat in the horizontal position before we try and fill the water system back up if draining the caravan down over winter we'd put that switch into the the little yellow drain bung into the up position and open all of the taps and again we want to open the kitchen sink the bathroom sink and the shower and just make sure all of the water is drained from the system so we'll now move on to the gas system now we normally pull all the gas through on our hob 
Uh, the reason for this is that we can physically see that we've got the gas coming through the system. So if we're there trying to light the fridge or the Aldi heating and it's not lighting for some reason, um, we don't actually know whether there's gas coming through the system or not if we haven't done this first. So uh, by lighting up the hob rings, we can physically see that the gas is through the system and that we have got gas coming through. And again, same as home, uh, these turn to the flame, push in and hit the igniter and they will light up. The electric ring, we've got a little light indicator just to say that that's lighting up. Uh, and then we've got from one to six. Again, we need to make sure that nobody turns this while the glass lid is down. If we do turn this and the glass lid is down, there is a chance that if it's not hit the, the, the sensor, um, it will come on and shatter the glass. Again, likewise, we need to make sure that if we've used the hob, all of these are cool before we uh, we put that glass lid down. So just make sure that they're fully, fully cold before this glass lid comes down. Onto the grill, a uh, little gas knob here with our grill symbol at the top. And again, it's hold it in onto the big flame, hit the igniter and we get the gas through the system. Uh, we have already bled the gas through the system, so if you're changing a gas bottle over, it will just take a couple of minutes of drawing the gas and holding the gas flay or gas holding the gas control knob in the on position just to get the gas through the system. And again, the oven works on a thermostat, so even if we're on nine or one, the size of the flame is going to stay the same uh, until it's up to temperature and then the flame will will die down once we've got our gas through the system our fridge is going to light up an awful lot quicker on gas if we are using it on the gas now to turn the gas the fridge on and off we've got our first on and off button we can then select whether we're using electric, if we're using gas. I don't know whether you could hear that ignite then. You'll hear a bit of a ticking and then a slight burning of the, the gas noise. If we were connected to the car and we're going to travel with the fridge on to cool, we'd press the battery button. If we press that now, it will come up with a warning just to say that we've got an error because we've not got a car connected. We can then move along to our temperature setting. So this one will alter what temperature the fridge is running at. The next one along is if we've got a big build up of ice, this would actually put a little warmer on and heat the outside of the, the freezer area and just defrost any little frost speckles um, from, from around there. So that will just sort of defrost it basically. Again, I don't know whether you can see the That is uh, freezing down quite nicely already. A um, bit of moisture on there from, from freezing down. Onto our heating system. This is fitted with the Aldi heating system and we've got our main control here, which we then turn on with the on button. We'll then come up with our main setting just saying that we've got power on our internal temperature at the moment is 35 degrees now this caravan is fitted with air conditioning and we can turn a light on on the air conditioning with that first button I'll turn that one back off and we can manually turn the air conditioning on as well with the ACC button and again today we definitely need the air conditioning on it is a little bit noisy so I'm going to turn it off just for a little while but that has been running and keeping us uh, 
a little bit cold but as you can see the temperature inside has still gone up to 35. Now if we did need heating we can use our top setting here and we can set our thermostat to where we want. We can then put our hot water on and off either on off mid setting or high setting and then we can choose whether we want one kilowatt electric two kilowatts electric or three kilowatts electric now three kilowatts electric is going to use a lot of power so if you go onto a site and they've got a restricted power you'll need to select which which setting that is best for the site and you may find that if it is a low power site on the three kilowatts it may be tripping the site out uh, and again if you've got other things running it just obviously depends what the power on the site is to whether you can run that three kilowatt electric on three kilowatt electric it is going to heat up an awful lot quicker um, if we want to use it on gas again we just hit the gas symbol and that will run the system on the gas as long as we've got gas on the caravan and we've bled the gas system through that will then operate on the gas we can run both together for a short period of time if we were needed to heat the water up extra quick we can just put the water onto our high setting and run gas and electric together and that will just boost the system through obviously you're going to use twice as much electric and twice as much gas by doing that so what i'd say is once you've got up to temperatures either on the heating in the winter or on your hot water you can then decrease the power settings as required so with the air conditioning we have got a remote control also now to power the remote control we've got a main on and off button and in here then we can set our temperature to what we want we've got our modes so at the moment we're just on normal air conditioning uh, we've got a heat setting and we've got auto depending on what we've got our temperature set to we have then also got a fan setting which again we can put on low medium or high and again there is further timer light and you can set the time from here also you can then if you don't want the air conditioning on hit the off button about five ten seconds that will turn the air conditioning off let's turn the light back off we have then got the microwave and again this has got the eco mode so we if we just try and turn this on and off at the moment it's not going to do anything because we're in eco mode so to wake the microwave up we first have to press eco and then we can go into settings and that will operate onto the toilet area to the bathroom we've got our cassette toilet now our flush button is on the top there to open the cassette we've got the little grey handle which goes towards the back and that opens the trap up to let everything through and again we must make sure that this grey handle is right fully forwards if that isn't right fully forwards when we come to connect, take the cassette out that isn't going to come out of there we have got a little indicator on the toilet control panel which when the cassette needs emptying that will light up Got a pull cord by the bathroom door which turns all of our bathroom lights all of our bathroom lights on and off the rear bunk bed area 
we have got a dividing door which for travel we must make sure that this is fastened up uh, before we try to travel otherwise this is going to be swinging around and cause damage on uh, on traveling yeah, and that just comes across and shuts the back bedroom off we've then got a above cabinet light switch just underneath here and individual light switches and then again the bunk beds have got their own little individual lights with their own switches on on the front and they've also got their little usb sockets on at the back here we have got a cable run and just in this little cubby hole here we've got a 230 volt socket a 12 volt socket and the tv aerial and then again we've got our back set of drawers and a bottom locker underneath of bottom bunk bed we have got the, another bunk ladder for the side bunk bed we've got the little infill for the bottom bed and bunk bed guards for the top bunk bed there is also some wastewater pipes just in there also we've then got battery the battery on this Bailey Unicorn Segovia is hidden in the floor so access is just through here again for normal use uh, you won't need to do anything just really over the winter maybe take it off just to keep it fully charged um, all the carpets are in the wardrobe along with the Aldi water system which again is just above the minimum at the moment our main chip switches and fuses are located just underneath of the fridge Um, again at the side of the fridge we've got our freestanding table storage and then right at the front in the front locker we've got our CD radio If there's anything else that you'd like us to run through in a little bit more detail or you need explaining a little bit better just let us know and we can hopefully just run back through the area that you need us to. Thanks ever so much for watching.